Welcome to Texans Week, Dolphins, Houston. Back to Sun Life Stadium this week, and everyone's feeling pretty good, I feel. This is... That's what wins do for you. That's a, a great win, too. I'm CBS 12 Sports Director Matt Lincoln. This is the Sun Sentinel Dolphins columnist Omar Kelly. You are excited, fans. Re-energize. You are a giant that has been sleeping, and you now have awoken, and you can't take any more naps. It's very, very exciting. Who says they can't fall back asleep? Well, they could, just they can't. They can't be allowed to. Okay. Man right. Campbell says we cannot. Is that Man Campbell or Dan Campbell? No, it's Man Campbell. Oh, okay, I'm Man also Campbell. Cambo. Cambo is, is yes. another good one. Because I called him Rambo last week. He's Cambo. He, that, he that makes Cambo. a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense. I like that. I put a lot of thought in this. Okay. If Dan Campbell was a Campbell's soup, what would he be? <laughs> they actually created a meme for it. It's called a can, can, Dan Campbell can of whoop ass. Oh, I like it. Uh, yes. I, vid- I would have vidged it's just like a can of steak. You know, there's no soup, there's no liquid. It just opens and just uh, no, comes out. Potatoes and it goes. He's like, a meat, he's like a meat and potatoes guy. And then it punches you in the face. Just this, <laughs> okay, very exciting. 38 10 win. So, how much of this win is on the changes that took place in the coaching staff and Dan Campbell? And how much of it is other stuff like, ah, oh, coming off a bye, Tennessee's not that good, all that sort of thing? I will give you three elements. Uh, Last week I said that Tennessee was a pretty good defense, and I do mean that. Mm. I liked a lot of things that I saw from them from a defensive standpoint. I wasn't sure that the Dolphins could be as physical running the ball as they were, but they were. So I think a lot of credit goes to Dan Campbell for the changing of the mentality of this Dolphins team. I mean, you talked about competitiveness Mm. and one-on-ones and pushing players. You know, that was one complaint that I'd always heard during the Joe Philbin era. Guys who are the backups, they really couldn't push that hard in practice because, you know, we can't hurt the starters. Right. We can't push the starters. And you never got an op- Billy Turner never got an opportunity to prove that he could do better than Jameel Douglas or Dallas Thomas. Never. In two years. Never got an opportunity. All of a sudden, we insert him into the starting lineup. You see him on the second level making major blocks, 180 rushing yards. That is a credit to giving got pushing harder giving guys an opportunity to challenge for that starting spot and i give that credit to dan campbell now also i think the in, the addition of Deion sims coming back from mm-hmm. that concussion injury i mean that two tight end package is miami's base package that is what they do 60 percent of the time especially when they have an even game or are able to let the play action game come alive when you have two tight ends on the field it allows you to disguise what you're doing and what your intentions are and then Based on what the defense is doing, you could either run or you could pass, but you're, you're set to do both. So I think the addition of Deion Sims into, back into the, the rotation opened up probably 40% of the playbook. So, and, and then the, second, the third thing is the big money players, the impact players, the Brandon Alberts, the Cameron Wakes, the Rashad Jones, the Brent Grimes, they took ownership of the team. And they said, we're gonna, follow, we're gonna set the tone and everybody else is gonna follow. I'm talking about $62 million worth of players. You actually saw it against the Texans, and I'm not sure you were seeing that in the beginning of the season. Well, we talked about a week ago that we didn't think that this was a team that could win the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And they dominated it this weekend, both sides. Against a very physical Texans team, which certainly, um, it it says that, hey, there was more meat on the bone than, than what we were getting from Joe Philbin. And, and I, I've always thought that, I've always said that. I think for three straight years, four straight years, I'd said that this team had way more talent than Joe Philbin and his staff were coaching mm-hmm. it to. Um, I think maybe the style of football that Joe Philbin wanted to play didn't fit into what, what they w- were built to do. Um, it surprised me as physical as they were um, uh, on Sunday, 38-10. The offense being aggressive surprised me. Ryan Tannehill. 9.17 yards <laughs> per attempt, fourth highest yards per attempt average in his career. Um, I didn't know that was in him. Yeah. Um, and, and I still don't know if it was an aberration or is this what's here to stay. Dan Campbell talks about how he wants an aggressive team. The question is, can Tannehill continue to keep that up? So I love all the changes in the tone. I love the fact that this team is now being led by a leader of men. Let's see how far it can take them. But just Tannehill wasn't the only big difference kind of new difference maker on offense. Let's take our first Twitter question. It comes from Javier. Can Lamar Miller sustain yesterday's workload? Absolutely. Um, I've always been 
puzzled why the Dolphins feel like Lamar Miller can't touch the ball more than 15 times a game, why they think he's made of glass. Lamar Miller has worked tremendously hard every single offseason. He works out twice in the offseason, one doing yoga and, <laughs> and, 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 and body stuff, and then, and then a, a weightlifting session, a running session, biking down at the University of Miami. He works out tremendously hard to show that he can be a workhorse back, and it puzzles me why he was never ever ever given the opportunity to Lamar Miller had the fourth highest yards per carry average in the entire NFL of backs who carried the ball more than 50 times last year yet he could only touch the ball 13.5 <laughs> times right. a game that didn't make any sense to me and it never has made any sense I am glad that they Dan Campbell has told him we're going to feed you and if you're productive we're going to continue to feed you the first the game first drive Four straight touches for Lamar Miller. And I'm not saying that he can only be a threat running the ball. You need to throw passes to Lamar Miller as well. He needs to touch the ball 20 times a game to lighten the load on the passing game in Ryan Tannehill. And I think that that's a great strategy for success. It's not like they got Tom Brady back there. To get someone yes. who it would really be nice if all that pressure was not on Ryan Tannehill's shoulder. Let's take our next question from uh, Andy Lawson. Should the Finns still sign a fullback, or will Earl Mitchell work? What did you think of that? I, I thought it was good. I think if you give Earl Mitchell probably seven, five to seven car I mean opportunities a game to get out there to be a lead blocker, the biggest issue to me was third and two. That's when you need a fullback. Right. You know, Joe Philbin was opposed <laughs> to a fullback being on his roster. And I don't have a problem with Earl Mitchell being that fullback because he was a fullback in college. Um, that is a position that he played before he was moved to the defensive line. He's still naturally a pretty decent fullback. And I think that that's a great position flexibility. It allows you to play Jordan Phillips more. He's a second round pick. He needs to play a little bit more. And on those third and two, dear God, thank you, please, thank you, Dan Campbell, for actually not lining up in shotgun <laughs> for third and two. I appreciate that. They lined up with quarterback under center, with a fullback in the backfield, or Deion Sims in the backfield, and they ran the damn ball. Yeah. Two thumbs up. Prove they could be aggressive. How about Cam Wake? We've been... Uh, Showing a little we, displeasure with him through the past couple of weeks, and we you said to put a toe tag. You on said him. he's been hurt. He's been hurt. He's been hurt, mm -hmm. and, and he's we still saw, hurt. And we saw, and he's still hurt. But we saw old Cam Wake. The rest, I think, certainly helped him. A bye week. He didn't practice all the bye week. He only really had two practices during during the week. Um, limited him. Plus. His snap load mm. is drastically limited. I believe he's playing 46% of the snaps now, where last year he played 76% of the snaps. Tremendously lighter workload. Derek Shelby is now a borderline starter. He's splitting the snaps, getting more snaps than Cam Wake, primarily to set the edge. Cam Wake is struggling run, stopping the run, but he can still be a very dangerous upfield player, and that's where the Dolphins are beginning to use him more as a situational pass rusher. And I think it suits him. I think it plays to the strengths of the team. If you can get Derek Shelby to set the edge and bring Cam Wake in on passing downs, hey, maybe it can work.